Let him go. Let him be wide and free, baby. And you know what Robin is doing right now? He's making the Lakers hate him. He's making them hate him, and he wants them to. But Robin is up for the task. He told me tonight he has his most success against Shaq when he antagonizes him, throws him off his game by being physical, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Like they say, no matter how big he is, he can fall just as easy. Have you ever noticed Scotty laughed every time he broke up a Rodman sequence? Three versus one, Shaq was just huge. Pippen was laughing because that whole situation was ridiculous. Don't forget that Wall Street dude at the stands who hyped up insanely. And now the Bulls maybe will take him out and take that threat away. The fact Rodman was able to throw Shaq around, like how Shaq was able to throw the rest of the league around, just shows how incredible he was as a defensive monster. This goes to show how genuinely dominant Prime Shaq was. Let's break down this great 90s classic between Chicago and LA. Rodman says he will try to keep us cool, but he stopped short of guaranteeing it. MJ, Pippen, and Rodman were against young Shaq, rookie Kobe, and those guys. To Jordan and Pippen, Nobody, and I mean nobody, did to the Chicago Bulls what these young Lakers did to them in this game, running up 101 points by the end of the third quarter. The Chicago Bulls should have lost this one against the Los Angeles Lakers. When the Lakers had Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman down by 22 points late in the first half and 18 points at the end of the third quarter, Shaq, Kobe, and those guys laughed and joked. Nick Van Exel was doing that little shadow boxing dance he loves to do. Jerome Kersey with a baseline jumper. Jordan at the other end. No. Oof. Young Lakers celebrated on their bench and taunted Chicago fans sitting behind them. Chicago started the game without the required fire, allowing the Lakers to dominate inside and outside, preferring to whine about the officiating while Nick Van Exel and Eddie Jones were streaking in for layups. Jerry West and the Bus family built a young team that played attentive defense, forcing the Bulls to let centers Bill Winnington and Robert Parrish shoot, often keeping Jordan and Pippen so quiet on offense that you hardly knew they were there. Even the rookies took it to the Bulls, with 18-year-old Kobe Bryant putting himself right in the superstars' faces and Derek Fisher draining a jumper with Randy Brown hanging over him. Dennis Rodman seemed the most disinterested of the Bulls, playing indifferent defense on Eldon Campbell and fuming at the refs, once needing Jordan to put himself between Rodman and one of the refs. Remember those days? Rodman could turn a tiny peak into a massive rage instantly. Shot. Ah. Loose ball foul. Bill Winnington and O'Neal was like a tissue on a sneeze. Winnington couldn't stop what was coming, and he could merely absorb it. Luke Longley was out with that separated left shoulder, and Dennis Rodman had to play a lot in the post. Rodman could do anything to defend against the Lakers at the beginning. Shaq scored at will. Not only on dunks, but with spin moves, finger rolls, and no arc shots from the paint that Shaq practically stuffed from five feet away. Analyzing Orlando Shaq to Los Angeles Shaq. The addition of O'Neal made Los Angeles a viable contender in the Western Conference, but though O'Neal was second behind Michael Jordan in scoring, he struggled at the free throw line. The same year but earlier in the playoffs, the series clinching Game 4 at Orlando Arena was a good example. O'Neal had 19 first half points, but just 8 in the second half. It had nothing to do with the hack a shack defensive philosophy the Bulls employed in the past, simply putting O'Neal on the line where he is one of the worst in the business. Always the ugly part of the stat sheet for Shaq is the free throw shooting. So far in the playoffs overall, he's made 42 but missed 71. That's a miserable 37%, but against the Bulls, it's gotten worse. It had more to do with the Bulls coach Phil Jackson's creative double teaming. Longley would defend O'Neal one-on-one, with everybody from Michael Jordan to Pippen to Rodman sagging down on O'Neal sporadically to give Longley help. And when Longley wasn't guarding O'Neal, Jackson would let Rodman handle the duties. At times, O'Neal was confused, 
not realizing what was happening to him. He always seemed to be waiting for that hack shack defense. O'Neal's role didn't change much from his days in Orlando. The Lakers' offense revolved around him, but it did not run through him as much as the offense did when O'Neal was with the Magic. In Orlando, he was more of a feature with their shooters standing outside. They did some different things in LA, but he was still the same player. He got 25 to 30 touches in the course of a game. Rodman's defense on Shaq in locking him up. The lesson should not be lost on Dennis Rodman. Had he been tossed early, he could not have made the difference he did at the end on Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq looked out of uniform in the purple and gold of the Lakers, but in the end, he was the same Shaq of Orlando. Rodman took over in the fourth quarter, and O'Neal reverted to his familiar mood. Shaq got frustrated, of course. Rodman was grabbing rebounds from his critical free throw misses, and then O'Neal shoved Rodman without censure. For three, in and out. Rodman rebound, timeout Chicago. And Percy knocks the ball away. Be careful, here comes O'Neal. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> Scotty and Michael are saying, Dennis, you're not getting to anything right now. Both Jordan and Pippen grabbed Rodman as if he had been the aggressor, tackling him to the floor. Jordan choking Rodman, a happy mugging as it turned out. The three of them emerged laughing. Dennis Rodman would prefer not to play so much center, but the Bulls don't have a choice. When things got hairy against the Lakers, Rodman went up against Shaquille O'Neal. Rodman, who had 18 rebounds, was one of the reasons O'Neal scored just four points in the second half. He played O'Neal 101 in last year's Eastern Conference Finals when O'Neal was still with the Magic. Phil has me playing center for some reason, and I don't know why. I don't know how much I can take playing center every game. For me, I have to have something that's going to be very challenging, whether it's basketball or something off the court. But I think I found a way to motivate myself and have more fun. It was also a significant moment in that at least O'Neal got to touch the ball. He didn't get many opportunities on offense because Rodman's pressure defense. The Bulls have that small unit out there. Rodman will pick him up defensively now. Pippen is back on the floor with regulation. Score to win a basketball game. Rodman goes for the steal. Here's Pippen who is fouled. And your point here is O'Neal. The double comes from Michael Jordan. Shaq early into the clock. Skip pass out to Kersey. He's been cold in the ball game. Underneath, Rodman takes O'Neal down hard. When not leading to a turnover, did the next best thing and forced the Lakers out of their offense. Sometimes when he did get the ball, it was out of scoring position. So O'Neal had 23 points at halftime and three shots in the third quarter, two in the fourth and none in overtime. When his only scoring opportunity was two free throws with 124 remaining, both missed. He finished with 27 points and 13 rebounds. When the Bulls went on a 6-0 run late in overtime, they had it for good. That made for the final 129-123 margin, with Kukoc accounting for five of their 13 points in overtime and the end of the Lakers in what had become a very long night. How did Rodman find a motivation to stop Shaq? His suspensions, of course. Before the game, Dennis Rodman said that he probably would file a grievance against the Bulls over a two-game suspension. It has nothing to do with the $104,878 in lost wages that the National Basketball Players Association contends violates the NBA's collective bargaining agreement. The agreement says players can be fined no more than $25,000. And it has nothing to do with the Bulls who suspended Rodman before the league could punish the veteran forward for his expletive-laden tirade more than a week ago. He was the most entertaining, but the media portrayed him as a role of a disruptive teammate. Basketball is all about, people like to see stuff like that, a little activity, a little, you know, a little here and there, I mean, but... Before this Laker game, Rodman wasn't in the New Jersey game, yet remained the center of discussion. He was serving his suspension imposed by his own team. In the East, nobody made the Bulls sweat except Dennis Rodman. Why would the Bulls suspend its own player? Because of his explosion that followed an ejection in the Toronto game. 
After losing to the Heat at home, Chicago couldn't beat the Raptors the following night. Rodman felt the refs were picking on him. The Bulls punished him before David Stern could. I don't think we're frustrated with him particularly, but there is a certain level of non-communication that goes on with Dennis. Rodman isn't much of a listener. Even the world's greatest player has difficulty getting through. These are Phil Jackson's comments. When Phil Jackson and Jerry Krause met with Rodman in the summer of 95 and made him promise he would behave, the Bulls sought Pippen and Jordan's approval before executing the deal. Michael Jordan criticized Rodman, suggesting Rodman should temper his cult figure enhancement and play ball. He's taken on a lot, Jordan said. Maybe it's too much for him, too time consuming. I've got a lot going on, more than I've ever had to deal with, but this is the first time Dennis has had to deal with it. Just like Shaq's movies and rap albums, Dennis Rodman had a movie due in the spring, had a show on cable, and had commitments to do two books in 97. He was a busy man, but also he was busy distracting the bulls. The ejections, headbutts, and fines came after. Two years earlier, he personally destroyed the Spurs in the playoffs. The Bulls had far more talent than the Spurs ever had, but whether they were strong enough to survive a Rodman rebellion in the postseason was a question they'd instead not answer. Could Rodman join Dean Smith and go down as a second man to stop Michael Jordan, right? The Bulls could not control Rodman. They could only hope his behavior was linked to boredom, that the playoffs would summon the rebounder and suppress the rebel. He's independent, Jordan said. I feel very reluctant to step into his world or crowd him. I want him to make his own choices. Rodman was going at the league, the refs, everyone. They're just watching me. If I threw a punch just one time, then I'd have a reason to get suspended or fined. I'm not going to fight for the money. Instead of giving it to the NBA, I'd rather give it to people who need it. I'm just going to fight for the fact that I think the league is messing with me. In the end, Rodman did his thing. He switched to an ultimate defender in the second half and stopped Shaq. Terrific job on Shaq defensively in the second quarter. And nice free throws at the end. Oh, yeah. You know, Shaq uh, only had, what, six points in the second half or something like that. You know, people said that uh, Dennis Rodman is this, Dennis Rodman is that. But they can't deny, but he's a hell of a basketball player. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dennis. Shaq had the people hanging off of him to stop him from scoring. Props to the Worm for being severely undersized and still managing to guard Shaq better than anyone outside of Yao Ming. Rodman's defensive prowess was extraordinary and unquestionably the most outstanding rebounder in basketball history. This game shows what value Rodman brought to a team. Scoring is important, but nobody else does what Rodman does anywhere near as well as he did. The dude was clubbing all night long and yet still managed to do his thing on the court the next day. Chicago showed why they are the champions. They hung in there in the fourth quarter. They could have packed it in, but showed the heart of a champion. Maybe it was the playoff atmosphere. Perhaps it was the marquee matchup between Michael Space Jam Jordan and an up-and-coming Shaquille Kazam O'Neal. Perhaps it was the national television audience. Young Lakers had to know that the Bulls didn't get where they are by playing three quarters of basketball. The Lakers have shown everybody that they could play with the Bulls, but they haven't shown anybody that they could beat them. For those of us who waited quite a while to see if LA is once again in the same league as Chicago, figuratively as well as literally, we got our answer. The Lakers demonstrated by this showing that they still have much to learn.